Hello! Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the alterations that can occur on the gastrointestinal tract during colic, using the model that I showed you in a previous video. If you missed that one, I will leave you the link here. Let's start with large colon. In case of left dorsal displacement or nephrosplenic entrapment, the left colon moves between the spleen and the left abdominal wall and can remain entrapped between the spleen and the left kidney hanging up on the nephrosplenic ligament. On rectal exam, left colon can be palpated in this position or the spleen can be felt displaced medially if it remains between spleen and the abdominal wall. Similarly, on ultrasound we cannot see the left kidney near the spleen because the colon is in the middle. But actually, if there is not too much gas in large colon, as you can see, anatomy is not really changed too much, so diagnosis is not always so easy. With right dorsal displacement, left colon turns cranially and moves to the right side between the cecum and the right abdominal wall. On rectal exam, pelvic flexure cannot be palpated as it is not in its place anymore. And on ultrasound, vessels of the mesocolon can be evident on the right abdominal wall. Again, diagnosis is not always easy as distension with gas of large intestine can make rectal exam really difficult. With large colon torsion, a segment of the large colon turns on itself. It can occur at any point of the large colon and on both clock sends and of different degrees, so the extension and the degree of vascular damage may vary. With intussusception, a segment of the small intestine telescopes inside of another. It's more common in young horses and it can be secondary to the presence of intestinal parasites. On ultrasound, we usually find an image like this one of a target sign or bullseye sign. With bulbulus, a segment of small intestines turns around its mesentery. The portion involved can be more or less extensive and the vascular compromise depends also on the time passed since the beginning of the colic. The same happens with the strangulating lipoma. A lipoma is a benign tumor of adipose tissue that develops as a ball with the pedicle attached to the mesentery. And this pedicle can turn around the portion of small intestine or, less frequently, of small colon. With epiploic foramen entrapment, a segment of small intestine moves into the epiploic foramen and remains entrapped. This happens especially in wheat suckers, and this is a little bit more difficult to explain you with this model, as the stomach balloon doesn't really have the same shape of the real stomach. So I'll show you with this drawing. Actually, the intestine doesn't really enter directly into the epiploic foramen, but instead it passes through the vestibule of the omental bursae that's delimited by the gastrosplenic and the hepatogastric ligaments, pancreas and lesser curvature of the stomach. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye!